Tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video drops. In this video, we'll talk about a bizarre incident involving Baylor in the 1990s and how it actually benefited them to lose a game. Also, join me tonight on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes. Link to play below. And now, on with our feature presentation. Is it just me, or did Sunday's game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Los Angeles Rams feel familiar? Like, eerily familiar, as though we had seen this exact same game play out before between these two teams. For those who aren't watching this in the immediate aftermath of the game, or need a quick refresher on what transpired, it's November 6, 2022. It's week 9 in the NFL season, and we have an absolutely big game in the NFC on our hands between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Los Angeles Rams, the two most recent teams to win the Super Bowl. This is a must-win for both of these teams, and that's putting it lightly. Both the Bucs and Rams have gotten off to atrocious starts, especially when compared to their preseason expectations, as the Rams sit at 3-4 and, and the Buccaneers sit at 3-5. and five. If you lose this game, making it to the playoffs is going to be an uphill climb for sure. If you win it, however, and with how weak the NFC is, and especially in Tampa's case, with how weak the NFC South is, you've still got somewhat of a fighting chance. And what we got was a relatively low-scoring game, that ended in typical Tom Brady fashion. Because every time you try to count out Tom Brady, and every time you try to say that he's washed up, that father time is finally catching up to him, and that he can't do it anymore, he goes ahead and makes magic happen. Because with 44 seconds left, and the Bucks down by 4 points with no timeouts, needing to go 60 yards and drive down the field in order to win this one, Tom Brady organized a brilliant touchdown drive culminating in a one-yard touchdown pass to tight end Cade Auden. It was a masterful drive, where excluding the time where he spiked the ball to stop the clock, Brady was perfect on every throw. And it gave the Buccaneers a dramatic and incredible 16-13 victory to keep their season alive, and might be the catalyst to turning things around after a rough first half. For many Bucks fans, this win felt good. After a disappointing campaign to say the least, full of questionable coaching moves, awful play out of key players, and atrocious running, this felt like the first step in the right direction in quite some time. But for some Bucks fans who have been around for a bit, maybe after this game, their mind wasn't focused on the future. Instead, it was focused on the past, and another meeting between the Buccaneers and the Rams. Because they say that history repeats itself, and man was that the case on Sunday. Because when you break it down, the Buccaneers-Rams game from 2022 and the Buccaneers-Rams game from 12 years before that in 2010 were practically identical. We're going to break down every parallel between these two games, but keep in mind that even though some of the comparisons between Tampa's 18-17 win over the Rams in 2010 and Tampa's 16-13 win over the Rams on Sunday might seem fairly generic and might seem like you're fairly run-of-the-mill comparisons, Others will make you scratch your head and truly wonder how history could repeat itself twice, or how the scriptwriters could be so lazy. To start off, in 2010, the Buccaneers, sitting on three wins, were playing the Rams, sitting on three wins. In that one, the Bucs entered with a 3-2 record, and the Rams entered with a 3-3 record. So a win by the Rams was critical in order to avoid being below 500 after the game. In 2022, the Buccaneers, sitting on three wins, we're playing the Rams, sitting on three wins. In this one, the Bucks enter with a 3-5 and five record, and the Rams enter with a 3-4 and four record, so a win by the Rams was critical to avoid being below 500 after the game. In 2010, this was expected to be an evenly matched game, as the Buccaneers were favored by exactly three points at the time of kickoff. In 2022, this was expected to be an evenly matched game, as the Buccaneers were favored by exactly three points at the time of kickoff. In 2010, when the two teams met, the game was held at Raymond James Stadium, just like in 2022, when the game was held down in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. Okay, that one might not seem that impressive, and understandably so, but when breaking down how these games were won by the Bucks and lost by the Rams, it gets a bit crazy. In 2010, when the Buccaneers beat the Rams, they did so by ending the game with more time of possession. On that day, the Bucks had 31 minutes, and 19 seconds of possession. In 2022, when the Buccaneers beat the Rams, 
they also did so by ending the game with more time of possession. On that day, the Bucks had 31 minutes and 16 seconds of possession. You have 31-19 for 2010 and 31-16 for 2022. Literally three seconds separate the two in terms of time of possession, which is crazy to think about how in both games, the Bucks held the ball on the Rams for just about the exact same time frame. In 2010, one of the reasons that the Buccaneers won was because even though they didn't force an interception, their secondary was pretty sharp, at least when it came to forcing incompletions. On that day, Rams starting quarterback Sam Bradford, a former number one overall pick in the NFL draft, went 13 for 26. On top of that, the Rams struggled early on to get their passing game into a rhythm, as on their first three passing plays, none of them went for any yardage. And in 2022, one of the reasons that the Buccaneers won was because even though they didn't force an interception, their secondary was pretty sharp, at least when it came to forcing incompletions. On that day, Rams starting quarterback Matthew Stafford, a former number one overall pick in the draft, went 13 for 27. Not only did Stafford in 2022 and Bradford in 2010 throw the same exact number of completions, but they did this on just about the same number of incompletions as well. On top of that, the Rams struggled early on to get their passing game into a rhythm, as on their first three passing plays, none of them went for any yardage. At least when it came to an inefficiency standpoint in the passing game, the Rams started this game in 2022 pretty much exactly the same as they did in 2010, right down to the fact that both times, the Rams went three and out on their opening drive. Speaking of how the game started off, let's talk about the flow of the game for both meetings. In 2010, at the end of the first quarter, thanks to a field goal by Connor Barth, the Buccaneers led a 3-0. In 2022, at the end of the first quarter, Thanks to a field goal by Ryan Suckup, the Buccaneers led a 3-0. However, this lead would be short-lived. In 2010, the Rams scored on their first drive of the second quarter, which was a 25-yard field goal by Josh Brown. Sam Bradford threw a touchdown pass, which would be the only quarter that he threw a touchdown pass in all day, and the Rams took a lead going into the halftime break. In 2022, the Rams scored on their first drive of the second quarter, which was a touchdown to Cooper Cup. Matthew Stafford threw a touchdown pass, which would be the only quarter that he threw a touchdown pass in all day, and the Rams took a lead going into the halftime break. However, in 2010, while the Rams had the lead, the Buccaneers had six points, as they were able to tack on three points right before the halftime break, with Connor Barth hitting a 39-yard field goal with exactly 24 seconds left. Get ready for this. In 2022, while the Rams had the lead, the Buccaneers had six points, as they were able to tack on three points right before the halftime break, with Ryan Suckup hitting a 38-yard field goal with exactly 24 seconds left. The time left with the field goal going into halftime to give the Bucks six points total was identical, and the yardage was a mere one yard off. So that's how the game was going at the end of the first half. In 2010, part of the reason why the Rams lost was because they couldn't get anything going offensively in the fourth quarter when it mattered most as they were shut out in the quarter. In 2022, part of the reason why the Rams lost was because they couldn't get anything going offensively in the fourth quarter when it mattered most, as they were shut out in the quarter. However, even despite those fourth quarter struggles, the Rams still had a chance to close the game out, as they had the ball and could have iced it right then and there. But for all intents and purposes, their head coach made a highly questionable decision that would be second-guessed immediately afterwards and especially with what we know now, knowing that the Rams lost the game. In 2010, the Rams needed a first down to essentially ice it, but instead of trying to get the first down, they were more concerned about the clock and keeping it running, as on 3rd and 11, they called a running play to Steven Jackson, which fell short of the line to gain, and ultimately led the Rams to punt, giving the Bucks one final drive to win it. In 2022, the Rams needed a first down to ice it, but instead of trying to get the first down, they were more concerned about the clock and keeping it running, as the coaching staff ordered Cooper Cup to slide to stay in bounds instead of trying to get the first down. This ultimately led the Rams to punt, and gave the Bucks one final drive to win it. And we'll get to that final drive in just a bit, which is where most people probably see where this one is going. But before we do that, let's talk about the quarterbacks for the Buccaneers. In 2010, 
the Buccaneers won with Josh Freeman under center. Freeman finished the game with one touchdown, no interceptions, and a passer rating of 80.4. In 2022, the Buccaneers won with Tom Brady under center. Brady finished the game with one touchdown, no interceptions, and a passer rating of 79.7. Not only did both quarterbacks have the same exact stat line when it comes to a touchdown-to-interception ratio, but their passer ratings were within less than a point of each other, and if you round it appropriately, they would be identical. Both quarterbacks also tried getting their running backs involved in the passing game. In 2010, Josh Freeman completed eight passes to his running backs, with all of them going to Cadillac Williams. In 2022, Tom Brady completed five passes to Leonard Fournette, and three passes to Rashad White. Those are the two running backs he threw the ball to. Add up their receptions, and you get, you guessed it, eight passes. Both Freeman and Brady not only had the same number of touchdowns, the same number of interceptions, and the same passer rating, but they had the same number of passes to their running backs. But that's not all, because both Brady and Freeman threw the same number of passes to their starting tight end. In 2010, Josh Freeman hit Kellen Winslow on five passes, and in 2022, Tom Brady hit Cade Auden on five passes as well. And with that incredibly wild stat out of the way, let's talk about the final big thing. And that is, well, how the game ended. In 2010, on the final drive of the contest, Josh Freeman successfully led his troops down the field needing a touchdown to win it. And with the ball at the one-yard line, and just 17 seconds left, with the Bucks having no timeouts left, Freeman completed the comeback to give the Bucks their fourth win of the season, as he hit Cadillac Williams on a one-yard touchdown to the right side of the field. In 2022, on the final drive of the contest, Tom Brady successfully led his troops down the field, needing a touchdown to win it. And with the ball at the one-yard line, and just 13 seconds left, with the Bucks having no timeouts left, Brady completed the comeback to give the Bucks their fourth win of the season as he hit Cade Auden on a one-yard touchdown to the right side of the field in the same exact end zone. When the Bucks scored the touchdown to give them the lead in 2010, the Rams had time for one final play after the kickoff, which was a short, completed pass, followed by some pitchy-pitchy woo-woo action that went nowhere. And in 2022, when the Bucks scored the touchdown to give them the lead, after the kickoff, the Rams had time for one play, which was a short, completed pass, followed by some pitchy-pitchy woo-woo action that went nowhere. In other words, literally everything about these games was identical. The start was identical. The quarterbacks on both teams were identical. The end of the first half was identical. The spread going into the game was identical. The venue was identical. The number of wins both teams had entering was identical. The distribution of passes by the Bucks quarterbacks to the running backs and tight ends was identical. The time of possession was identical, and the ending to the game, from the yard line, to the side of the field, to the time left on the clock, to the desperate lateral attempt by the Rams at the end, was identical. These games were mirror images of each other, with the only real difference being that the 2022 game definitely had a larger audience than the 2010 game, which was blacked out locally in Tampa. But if you didn't get to watch that game, you could at least watch this one 12 years later, and get the same exact idea. Because on Sunday, the Rams and Buccaneers proved that lightning can absolutely strike twice. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to JaguarGator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.